Today, I would like to label my thoughts with a very simple and basic question. Will the godly women please stand up? Will the godly women please stand up? As I was meditating and spending time in prayer and Bible study for today, I began to think about all the women throughout Scripture. I begin to think about the first lady ever made by the name of Eve, how she has been dubbed as the mother of all living. I begin to think about a lady by the name of Miriam who helped aid Moses during his leadership of the nation of Israel. I begin to think about a, a lady by the name of Ruth who decided she was going to remain a virtuous woman all the way up to the day that she was married. I begin to think about a lady by the name of Esther who with great boldness and courage walked into the court of the king and said what she needed to say on behalf of her, her people, the Jews. I begin to think about the lady by the name of Deborah, the prophetess who, who rose up in a time of need during the, the country of Israel. I begin to think about the lady by the name of Elizabeth who gave birth to the man we call John the Baptist. I begin to think about another lady by the name of Mary, who we all know as the Virgin Mary, who gave birth to the Savior, Jesus Christ. There's many women throughout the scriptures, but as I was thinking about these all time again, I was drawn to a lady in the book of Genesis who is mentioned here in Hebrews chapter 11. Did you know that only two ladies are mentioned in the great chapter of faith in Hebrews chapter 11? It is Sarah and Rahab. Rahab was known as a harlot before she got things right with God. And Sarah was a lady who, you've heard the story, gave birth to a child later in life. Will the godly women please stand up? You know the story of Sarah. We find that the story of Sarah is not complete without the story of Abraham and Sarah. In the book of Genesis chapter 12, we find that God gives them a declaration and says that I'm going to bless you by all those who bless you and curse all those who curse you. He goes on to tell Abram that, hey, you're going to move from your country. You're going to go to another country. And I am going to bless you with a child and a seed that will in turn bless all the nations of this world. And as you know the story, time was ticking away from Abraham and Sarah. Abram's name is changed to, Sarah, uh, to Abraham and Sarai's name is changed to Sarah. And they're still without child. Abraham and Sarah are in their 90s, still without a child. But before they get to that stage of life, Sarah comes up to Abraham and says, Take my mistress uh, to be your wife so you can have a son. And he did just as that. Which, by the way, that is not God's design for us in our society. God designed us for one man and one woman for life. We find in the story of Abraham and Sarah that because Abraham made that decision in his life, they gave birth to Ishmael. And now we have what's going on in the Middle East, the country of, the, excuse me, not the country, but the people of Islam going against the people of Israel. And we believe that we can trace it all the way back to Abraham, Isaac, and Ishmael. With that in mind, we find that God took Abraham aside and said, Abraham, I want you to look up into the sky tonight and look at all those stars. Can you number those stars? Abraham said, no, nah, it's impossible. I can't number all those stars. And he said, that's how I'm going to number your sea. That is your descendants. He says, I want you to go out to the ocean, go out to the sea and look at all the sand. You see, pick it up with your hands and, and I want you to just pick up a little, a little handful of, of that sand and I want you to number it for me. Abraham said, I can't number that. So shall your seed be in the days to come. 
And Abraham began to chuckle. He began to laugh. He said, am I going to have pleasure and, and have a child at this age of life? And he goes, and, and he, there, there, in Genesis chapter 18, they, they're, they're sitting there by their place, and, and the angel of the Lord comes. And, and with a couple of visitors, they, they come, and they discuss all these things. And Sarah hears their conversation while she's preparing a meal. And she begins to laugh. <laughs> And says, am I going to have a child at this age, in her 90s? You know what? I decided to go to Google. And, uh, you know, Google is an interesting tool. Um, you, you, it's, it's really remarkable. Today in our society, we have all the world's knowledge at our fingertips on our cell phone, the World Wide Web. So I just typed in Google, oldest recorded woman to give birth. How old do you think this lady might be? You think she's 70 years old? You think she's 80? How about 90 years old? Well, what we have is a lady who is 66 years, 50, excuse me, 66 years, 358 days old when she gave birth to not just one child, but to twins. How about them apples? Some of you here are almost 67. Maybe you're, you're a couple of years older. Maybe you're some years younger. How would you like to have a child at 66 years of age. <laughs> exactly. You begin to laugh right now, and that's exactly what Sarah was going through at the age of 90 when she heard that she was going to have a child, that God said, I'm going to give you a child. And we find that she did late in life. I want you to notice in our passage, I just want to give you five uh, steps to become a godly woman in our society today. Looking at this story, looking at these three verses, we discover these three things. But I want you to notice, it says, through faith, also Sarah herself received strength. Will you say that word strength with me? Strength. Through faith, also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. As I was meditating in her story and this passage of scripture, I wrote down this first step, how you ladies can become a godly woman in our society. Look to Christ for strength. This really can be applied to men as well. So in our lives today, how can we be godly and stand up in this age and this time? Well, let's look to Christ for strength. Many of us look to the weight room for strength. Some of us Look to the steroids for some great old strength. Some of us look to other avenues of life for strength. Some look to, to food for strength. Some look to going to bed at night as strength to, to give our bodies rest so that we can recuperate and, and survive another day of life. Well, I'm here to tell you today that if you want to survive in this life, if you want to survive and thrive, you need to look to Jesus Christ for strength. Not in your own might, not in your own power, which, by the way, this word strength, it gives a connotation of power. So, so today, do you want some power, uh, full power and strength in your life, ladies and gentlemen? Jesus Christ can bestow it to you today. And as we look at Sarah's life, she began to laugh when she heard that I'm 90 years of age and <laughs> God, you're going you're gonna to make me have a child? I would have said, Lord, you done lost your mind. What are you thinking, Lord? Through faith, also Sarah received strength to conceive seed. She was able to have that child. With God, all things are possible. The Bible goes on to say, not only did she look to God for strength, but the Bible says and was, say this word delivered with me, delivered. So she received strength, but she was also delivered of a child when she was past age. I wrote down the second way, the second step that each of you ladies can become a godly woman in our society. Not only can you look to Christ for strength, but you can look to Christ for deliverance. Look to Christ for deliverance. Yes, I believe this was a trial in her life. Could you imagine a 90-year-old lady giving birth to, to a baby? That, my friends, is a deep valley. I know some of you here this, this morning, 
maybe going through a deep valley, but you've never experienced the birth of a child at 90 years of age. And until you have, then, then you can say you need to be delivered of your trial. This word deliver, it gives a connotation that God is going to give you aid during those moments of life. Now, each of us men here today will never experience the delivery room in a hospital. I was in elementary school when some of my friends and, and they were talking about, I don't know, exact, I can't remember the exact context of the conversation, but I remember the conversation was like this. They began to talk about delivery. This lady was, was a, a, worked in the delivery department of a hospital. And all I caught was the delivery. So I'm like, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, I wonder what she does at the post office. <laughs> okay, well, this word delivered in the Bible not only gives the connotation that God's going to bring you through something, but that she was delivered, that is, the baby was delivered from her womb. That at 90 years of age, she had that child. Sarah did. And you can go back to Genesis. And, and by the way, um, after the flood in Genesis, the oldest recorded lady that we have in any document is Sarah. And you know how she old, old she was? 90. So we need to go put that on Google and tell them they need to go get their facts straight. Amen. Thank you for that, Brother Richard. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Through faith. Also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. Because, notice this next phrase of the verse, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Sarah looked at that scene in her life and she said, this is, this is impossible. There's no way this is going to happen. I'm sure that her and Abraham had conversations She said, uh, listen, God said this is going to happen, so let's just trust him that it is. And that we'll, we'll trust him for the strength and for the ability to, to, for to be delivered during this moment. And then after everything transpired, she noted that God was faithful to his promise. So I wrote down, look to Christ for strength. I wrote down, look to Christ for deliverance. But I wrote down this third step of how you ladies can become a godly woman in this society. Look to Christ to become faithful. Look to Christ to become faithful. It's about time that, yes, we not only have ladies, but also we have men that are faithful, not just to family, not to just the, their church family, not to just their country, but to God Almighty. She looked to God and said, God fulfilled his promise. So Abraham, let's make a promise to God that we will serve him and give Isaac to him and let God use them however he seemed fit. And as you know the story, God chose to use the man named Isaac to be a symbol of Jesus Christ later on in life in Genesis chapter 22. Look to Christ for strength. Look to Christ for deliverance. Look to Christ to become faithful. The greatest ability is dependability. And what I've learned over the years involved with different churches and Bible college and seminary and, and even while pastoring, that I have discovered that some Baptists are dependable at being undependable. I just learned it. Some preachers are dependable at always being unreliable. But today, ladies, today, gentlemen, let's not be known like that. Let's be known as men and women who we can always count on, who we can know that, that if we're given a duty, if we're given a task, that it will be accomplished. And God always fulfills his tasks. God always fulfills his promises. So if we claim to be Christians, if we claim Christ, then it's our responsibility to be faithful in everything we say and do. Notice verse 12. It says, Therefore, as a result of these things, therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as did, so, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. This verse 
It's looking back to the time where God told Abraham, just as you see all the stars and you see all the sand on the seashore, so will your seed be. But that seed is eventually going to bring forth a man. But not just any ordinary man. This man would go to the cross of Calvary for our sins and die a gruesome death. His name is Jesus Christ. So as I wrote down um, another statement, as I looked to verse 12, I, I thought of this. Look to Christ for salvation. Look to Christ for salvation. Today, we're, we're looking for deliverance. We're looking for salvation. We're looking to be saved in life in many different places. But I'm here to tell you today that Jesus Christ is the only person, the only individual that offers life and offers it more abundantly. You cannot find salvation in any other doctrine or decree or methodology or philosophy other than the Word of God that I'm holding right now. So today, ladies, today, gentlemen, do you want to be godly? Well, look to Christ for salvation. Look to Christ to become faithful. Look to Christ for deliverance. Look to Christ for strength. But may I draw your attention to verse 13. This last verse of our passage says, These all died in faith. Not just speaking of Sarah, but speaking of Sarah, of Abraham, of Noah, of, of Enoch, and Abel. And then all the others mentioned in this chapter, Moses, and Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph, and Rahab, and many of the others, such as David, and, and all the others that are mentioned here. It says, all of these who, who lived and died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded, that means to be fully convinced and assured of, and embraced them. That is, they, they, they made it a part of their lives and confessed. That not only did they believe it, but they, they confessed it to everybody, they shared it with people. That they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So, as we come to a conclusion, I wrote down this final statement. Look to Christ to live by faith. Look to Christ to live by faith. Here in verse 13 of Hebrews chapter 11, we find that Sarah, she was a lady who lived by faith. She just did. It's evident as you read the book of Genesis, as you look at her life, how, how even at the age of 90, she had a child. And God fulfilled her, his promise to her. She lived totally by faith. I don't know about you, but I don't know if I have that kind of faith that Sarah had. So today, I'm praying to God and asking him that he would give me just a little dose of that faith that Sarah had. Would you be willing to ask God for that type of faith today? My question for us all today, let's just think about it. I know, men, it is physically impossible despite what our society is trying to do with, with all these things, but I know it's physically impossible for us to, have a, to give birth to a child. But let's just all think about this rhetorical question. Think about it. Would you be willing to go what Sarah went through if God asked you? Men, would you be willing to go through what Abraham went through if God asked you? Look to Christ for strength. Look to Christ for deliverance. Look to Christ to become faithful. Look to Christ for salvation. And look to Christ to live by faith. Will the godly women please stand up? Father, we thank you.